people ask me sometimes, why do you waste time studying the Bible? It's just an old book, has nothing new to offer anything in society. And first, I would contend against any of those claims. But the um, main reason why I s continue studying the Bible is that I keep finding new interesting things in it. It's literally like a treasure uh, trove that, like, as I keep, like, 15, uh, I'm getting close to 20 years that I've really been studying it, and I still find things in it that I've never seen before. And as an example, in Matthew, um, it's described that the mother of James and John come to Jesus, comes to Jesus and says, will you allow my sons, James and John, to sit at your left hand and right hand? And his response to that is not no, it's I don't know. It's actually, well, it's more complicated than that. It's that he says to her, listen, you don't even know what you're asking for. Can they drink the same cup that I am to drink? And he's, of course, referring to the cup of suffering that he's about to consume on the cross. And their answer is, yes, we can. And he responds is that, yes, you will, in fact, drink from the same cup that I am, but it's not for me to give the positions of of glory like that it's not for me so it's not no it's maybe and as i was reading that for the first time i realized that if you were to take the king arthur's court approach to the 12 disciples um if you imagine it that way which that idea is heavily inspired by jesus and his disciples if you didn't know but if you took that idea and applied it to the scenario where you put, let's say, the one at his right hand was the first of the apostolic martyrs, and then you come all the way around to the ta end of the table, and on his left hand was seated the last of the disciples to perish, who would you put, who would be in that order? We don't know about most of the middle just from stories like we don't really know what year a lot of them died we we can visit their graves and stuff but we don't really know but we do know the first is james murdered by herod with a sword in the book of acts causes this immense breakout of um, persecution after stephen's execution and the first one to go down is james the brother of john the son of Zebedee and then you get all the way around the last of them to rest with their fathers is John the beloved disciple after he writes the book of Revelation at the very end in something like 95 AD and so that means what this means is that the one seated at his right hand in this illustration this isn't canon I this it's just the way I was thinking about it in the moment in this illustration that if they were seated at a round table like that the first one at his right hand would be in fact James and the one that would be seated at his left hand would in fact be John and so maybe there's a possibility that Jesus granted or that that his their mother's uh, request may have been granted. Now, let me put in a caveat. I understand fully that it wasn't referencing an illustration like that. That she was actually talking about a throne more like what a king has, which is often flanked. The one on your right hand is your, um, your man of action. He's your champion. He'd be the one that is responsible for going and doing things on your behalf. If you have to send a message to a kingdom, the man on your right, your right hand man, to quote Alexander Hamilton, is the one that would go. On your left hand would be your advisor, most often your queen, because queens were often an advisor to the throne, but would be your primary most trusted advisor, for which 
would give you insight into matters as you are reigning and you are offering judgment. That's what she was referring to. But I do like this illustration as I've painted it out at that round table where you have that you have this community of men that all suffered together for the name of Christ, seated in a manner of equal distance from him. I like that. So something for you to think about.